Men, can you raise your testosterone levels by shining light on your scrotum area? I'm not kidding. That was the premise of a documentary I saw. So if you've heard about this, I did some digging, and this is the evidence I found for light therapy raising testosterone levels. So let's start at the source. Here's the study mentioned in the documentary I saw, and take notice of the date it was published, 1939. So in this paper, a quartz mercury lamp was used and the light emitted was a combination of 28% ultraviolet light and 52% infrared light, and they irradiated people for between eight and 20 minutes. The researchers do not tell us how much UVA rays or UVB rays the lamp produced. I will also point out that the group of people recruited for this study consisted of men who suffered from various forms of depression, including manic depressive disorder, so they weren't totally what I would say healthy. The researchers also don't tell us how many men were in this investigation, which I also feel is a shortcoming. Now the areas of the body which were irradiated included the face, the chest, the scrotum area, the head and chest alone, and the scrotum area by itself, and a small area on the shoulder blade, which was about the same size as the genital region. And I think they did this because they were trying to determine if different body parts of the same size would yield different results in terms of testosterone levels. Another thing to point out in this investigation is that testosterone levels were measured using a calometric method, which I admit I'm not familiar with, but I did locate this paper from three decades later where it was still being used. That tells us it's probably pretty accurate. Now, one thing to point out with this investigation is that the researchers were measuring the excretion of androgens from the body, not the levels of androgens in the blood. Their line of thinking here was that greater excretion of hormones from the body would mean greater levels of androgens were being manufactured. Also notice that they were looking at the excretion of androsterone. Now, Androsterone is a steroid hormone that's converted into testosterone. So in other words, it doesn't look like they were directly measuring testosterone levels itself. Okay, so enough of the study background. What happened here? So after five radiation treatments of the chest, steroid hormone levels rose 120% from seven to 155 international units per liter. Now what's also interesting here is that after eight days without any irradiation, the levels of hormones drop back down to their normal levels. Something else that's interesting with this investigation is that when they irradiated only the scrotum area, they observed that the steroid hormone levels rose from 70 up to 205 international units per liter. That's an almost 200% increase in steroid hormone levels. Similar to before, after 10 days without radiation treatment on the scrotum, the steroid level hormones return back to their normal levels. Now, just to give you a better idea of what's going on here, here they show a graph that compares the rise in anabolic hormone levels between the chest area and the scrotum region. And as you can see, the excretion of anabolic hormones is greater for the genital region than the chest region. These researchers go on to say that irradiating the scrotum area was more effective than other areas of the body, even those areas of the body which were larger than the scrotum region. To confirm these findings, they actually did a double check using two individuals from the original group where they compared what happened when they irradiated a small section of the shoulder blade and compared that to the genital region, the scrotum basically. And as you can see in this graph, the excretion of hormones was again greater when the scrotum area was irradiated compared to when the shoulder blade area was exposed to radiation. Okay, so all this sounds really interesting, but we really have to remember that the men recruited from this study were hospitalized patients who had depression, and so they might not be representative of the general population. Also, it's worth pointing out that this experiment took place during the winter months. So that begs the question, would the same results in anabolic hormone levels be observed if you repeated this study during the summer months when people were getting more sunlight to begin with? We also have this study where low levels of lasers at a wavelength of 670 nanometers raise testosterone levels in rats. I'm going to discount this study because we're not rats. Same thing with this investigation showing that light therapy restores sperm production in mice. 
In this paper, low-level laser therapy did not raise testosterone levels in rams, but again, big deal because we're not rams. And then we have this investigation, which came out in 2016, which looked at light therapy and testosterone levels, where 38 guys with low sex drive were given either bright light treatment or a sham light treatment, which in theory shouldn't do anything. I will point out that this was not a investigation of exposing the scrotum area to light or low level lasers, but rather the general application of light to the body to see if inhibiting melatonin production from the pineal gland raised testosterone levels. Regardless, after two weeks, the light therapy was shown to increase significantly testosterone levels and guys rated their desire levels as being higher as well. This investigation sounds really interesting, but there is a problem, and that is it does not appear to be peer-reviewed. Rather, this was a poster presentation given at a symposium for the European Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology, which, in my opinion, carries less weight than a peer-reviewed study. And one more thing is that I can't find if this study was ever replicated either. In this study, the researchers state that ultraviolet radiation increases testosterone levels in men, but look at who they're referencing, the 1939 study. This is more proof that the original research on ultraviolet radiation and testosterone levels from 1939 has never been replicated. So after looking at the research, I have to say I'm pretty dissatisfied with the research that I was able to uncover. You would think that in almost 100 years, somebody would have tried to replicate the findings of the original 1939 study, but they haven't. Why? This would be easy to replicate. Any college student with access to a laboratory could do this study. So this means that you, the viewer of this video, has to do your own research to see if this actually works. What I would say is before you try a light therapy device and they can be expensive so I suggest you try this first get your testosterone levels measured before you do anything then pick a product that you think is going to work for you try it for a month and then get your testosterone levels tested again it shouldn't even take a month to see if your testosterone levels are higher according to the research if you have performed this type of investigation yourself leave a comment below let me know what happened and let me know what your before and after testosterone levels are i'm really curious until next time i am joe from supplementclarity.com take care